weekly meeting podcast for the OWASP Top 10 for Large Language Model Applications. If you'd like to stay up to date with our project, please click subscribe. And if you enjoy the content or have any questions, please feel free to comment and share. Now, on to our meeting. All right, everybody, welcome to the meeting. So um, I think we have a few normal pieces of business to cover out, but really the topic of today's meeting is a bit exciting is we're going to use this as the official kickoff for the 2.0 project. And as we get into this, we'll have to figure out what do we call it? Is it the 2024 version of the list? Is it 2.0? I don't know, but it's the same batch of work either way. So we might as well get started. So first off, I think it's worth just a quick note and quick review about where we've been over the last six months. Um, for some reason, when I asked for a robotic wasp on a podium, Dally decided that the one on the top was second place, but I still like the picture. So we're going to roll with it. It is amazing to think that it's really just give or take six months since we started this project. Um, I think I announced it in May and we didn't really kick it off until June. So right around six months. And we've accomplished an amazing amount. And, um, you know, it was just this week, one of my people that I work with at AWS posted a blog link from the AWS team, a very lengthy blog um, from AWS on LLM security that basically just, it was all about the OWASP top 10. It was great. And so we see... Um, major commercial companies. We see these standards bodies over and over again, getting involved with us, referencing our work. Um, we've actually seen several actual entire startups founded out of this group. Um, you know who you are, if you are one, and some of you know who they are. Um, won't mention them by name, but it's more than one. And it'll be really interesting to see what happens in that um, commercial LLM security space, but we've been involved in that every step along the way. So um, I can tell you there's increasing awareness and interest in what we're doing. It's not something where we put out the first version and then people lost interest. I can tell you every post that I do about this um, gets more views and more likes and more attention than the last. Um, and it's just great to see that overall trend. So. Um, along those lines, we did announce officially version 2.0, uh, the project last week or this week, I guess it was just this Monday, um, time flies. Um, this is just a snapshot. I looked this morning, it was closer to 34,000 impressions that, um, people have looked at and, you know, 1500 people who actually read the blog. Um, one of the things I did ask people to do in the blog was fill out a survey to give us some idea what people were thinking about. Um, I'll share some of the early results here, then talk about what we're going to do about it. And then um, since really we know the, the single goal that we've always said for 2.0 was we were going to be much more data driven. Um, I've asked Emmanuel to give us some updates from the data gathering group that got spun up a few months ago. And then we can talk about how that rolls in with the project. So I looked this morning and we were up to 92 responses. Um, so I'm going to let this run through the end of the weekend and see how many more we can gather up, see if we can get it over a hundred. Um, I'm going to guess not everyone on this call has even filled out the survey. So if you haven't go do it, um, but just a couple of quick observations um, about the data here. Um, first observation from this is in general, it seems like people who are responding to this think that we're on the right track. If you look at the predominance of the scores, uh, it's mostly fours and fives, which were the highest possible ratings in terms of how useful people thought this was. Um, you got two lonely people over on the side that didn't think it was very useful. And if nobody really disagreed with what you were doing, then, you know, it's probably too boring. So I'll take this for sure. The next few, I think there are some more interesting things that tell us something about our audience and what people are thinking. So um, first interesting thing here is 
we had very few people fill out the survey who were actually involved in the project. Um, I think there were less people who filled out the survey and said they were participants than there are on this call today. So I would love to see a bunch more of you who are participating, either people who are here today or people who watch the re recording. Just because you participated doesn't mean that we shouldn't get your thoughts into the initial survey. So please go do that. But on the flip side to that, the fact that a lot of the lurkers we have on the lists, and we know we have a lot of them, um, they were game to step up and give us their opinions. And perhaps even more exciting than that, almost half the people who responded said they hadn't participated in the group in, in any fashion before. So there's clearly a lot of interest in the fact that people have been willing to step up and just even take the first step of filling out the survey. I think that's great. Area of expertise. This surprised me. I don't know if it'll surprise any of you. Um, uh, I put, I think, five possible roles that people would have, software developer, security engineer, security researcher, data scientist, and executive. And I left a bucket for other. Um, people seem to really like describing in very specific terms what they did. And so I got a lot of um, other votes. But the thing I will tell you first is there are very few developers in this group um, in terms of people who identify as a software developer. It's a very small minority. And interestingly enough, I think we've always called that out as one of our major constituents and targets. I don't know whether we need to reevaluate that or whether we need to do a better job of reaching that audience, but it's something for us to consider. Um, I'd say everybody outside of that blue slice, almost all of them identified as something that was security first, development second, rather than the other way around. So I thought that was interesting. I came up with a list. Um, I'm trying to think. I think maybe John had part of this list in something a couple of weeks ago. I added a few things to it and I just said, what are people interested in? First thing to observe here, people are interested in just about everything. Um, you know, you can look at the ones that have um, very tall green bars as things that people think are critical to look at. Um, but if you even look at the things that have relatively short green bars, there's still a lot of people who answered this survey, a high percentage that viewed that area as critical or very important. So I think there was very little here that people looked at that said, nah, that's out of bounds. Um, even things that people really haven't probably thought a lot about, like emb embedding models and devices and things, which have been fringe topics that have occasionally come up for us. Uh, I think we're going to see more and more of all of these this year. So I think this is a good list of things we should at least be thinking about. And um, we'll do some more analytics on how people voted on this just to help guide the team. But I thought that was interesting. Um, the other one here, just in terms of topics, um, some of these things are things that we very specifically addressed at the outset of the project where we debated whether we were gonna take on some of these topics. They were hotly debated at the time. Um, other than the, these, these things are things that have just come up through the course of working along, but you can get the sense for it. But the obvious first thing is um, uh, privacy and safety rated very, very high. Um, you know, privacy and security are always somewhat strange cousins that are related, but very different. Um, I think sort of data privacy concerns and LLMs have become so intertwined in what people are worried about that very clearly this is something we should think about addressing in some fashion. Um, the other one that was interesting was AI safety was the one that, you know, went into the first draft charter, hotly debated. I think we decided at the time to leave some language in that included safety, but it's remained a key debate for us um, on and off for the whole six months that we've been here um, from the people responding. And this, again, includes a lot of people who had never been involved before. Um, very clearly, things like safety uh, are big concerns. The other thing is every single category, even ones that you might consider fringe, like super alignment, sustainability, 
um, got substantial uh, clusters of votes for critical or very important. So again, I feel like any of these are game for us to tackle as part of our work. So um, my plan with the survey is we'll leave that up through Sunday night uh, Pacific time. Uh, Monday, we'll do some official tabulation on it. Um, Ruben, who I think is relatively new to the group, uh, reached out to me and um, offered to do tabulation and analytics on the data. And I, I am always game for a good volunteer to take on a task like that. So I'll send him the data. We'll get some stuff from him. I'll do some of my own. And um, my intent is to put out some kind of blog on behalf of the group on what we found. Uh, I think a lot of people will be interested in it, um, given especially people who filled out the survey but also um, just the community at large, given we have tens of thousands of people who seem to like reading about what we're doing, this would be a good way to just get out some more thinking from the group. So um, any questions about the survey results or just comments from anyone that you wanna share, just getting a peek at the, the early returns here? I'm slightly not surprised on the low number of developers still because i think that reflects um how slowly um, this is being integrated in custom build applications i think hopefully we'll see more and more but we need yeah we need to up the game and bring more people in here the rest doesn't surprise me the rest if anything uh, you know the last slide that you had i and i will mention that in my slot i did a few engagements this week using the llm top 10 and using the um checklist um, and there, you know, it's kind of the view is that we need to rethink security, not just kind of the security controls, but the ethics and all those things. So something mm -hmm. to think about. Okay. Anybody else? Comments? Thoughts? I got two thoughts. Uh, first one is, I, I agree. I agree. I don't think I'm surprised by the lack of developers. I think even the web top 10 has a lack of developer awareness of interest. It's mostly security folks. And usually as a consultant, when I would bring up to developers, hey, go to the OWASP top 10 and look up how to stop cross-site scripting. It was always an education for them that that, that was even a thing. So I think we're not alone there. Uh, the other thing is one of the questions confused me on this and it's, it's great because they're actually both on this slide here. And that's the difference between safety and super alignment and alignment was confusing to me. I'm not sure what the difference is there. And that those kind of overlap in my head with ethics also a lot mm -hmm. of ways. So it'd be interesting to see like the breakdown of those three categories specifically, and maybe do some deeper dives down the road to see what people thought those meant. Yeah. I think, um, you know, maybe one of the things to think about when, when we, talk about the next phase, we want to get into some brainstorming and some discussions. And I think maybe forming up some of the discussions around these different topics and having people kind of contribute thoughts on that. I agree. Um, you know, especially when you look at this one, the boundaries between any of these are not necessarily clean, right? Why are we making government regulations? Because we're worried about the ethics of what people are doing or the privacy um, stuff. Why are the regulations in the news every day? Because the news is all worried about AI taking over the world, which is where we get into things like super alignment. So, um, you know, I did find it interesting that this group at the outset was very conservative about wanting to stay security focused. We had a lot of people in the group who were very adamant that you know, that's not a vulnerability, you know, a lot of debate around those kinds of things. And then here we still see a lot of people in the group interested in these very broad topics like bias, super alignment, ethics. So um, I, I think as a group, we got to find ways to tackle these while still staying focused on, you know, sort of the, the very technical aspects of security in terms of helping people shore up their applications because it's such a big problem. Well, I think part of the challenge, Steve, is that uh, you know at at the at the level that we're talking about these vulnerabilities, um, you know, it's it's almost too late to talk about bias. So I think as we have the other OWASP teams start to mature, mature, 
maybe it it'll be a time where we say okay that should be in the ml's you know top 10 or that should be over here in this bucket so that we're all working um in our in our zone and not in and letting other people tackle some of those more complex problems you know more efficiently at it since it's that specific area mm -hmm. all right anybody else all right appreciate everybody stepping up and sharing some thoughts so Again, we'll let the survey run out through the end of the week. I'm sure we can get it up over 100 responses, which would be a nice round number to make sure it feels somewhat statistically valid. But I think it was really largely meant as um, a guide to give the group something to rally around and think around while we do some fresh norming and storming around um, where we want to take the group this year. So along those lines, uh, for those of you who were here for um, the whole journey for the original list, we started off with brainstorming for several weeks. We had a few different sprints of brainstorming. We did try to focus it in certain areas, and I will be putting out some guidelines and some places where we can do this, wiki pages, um, Slack channels, people will do it in different ways, but we'll try to give them some some topics, um, but also just kind of keep it very open for a few weeks where people can bring those ideas, because I remember back from that early phase, a lot of things came up that I had never thought of before. And I think um, some of those things that came out of the early brainstorming phases were things that wound up being very influential in what we were doing. And if nothing else, it helped gel the group and I think we are going to have a lot of new people who are going to want to join. So this is a good time for them to come in, get out their ideas broadly and um, and get involved. Uh, I have a lot of people reaching out to me directly, sending me LinkedIn messages and things like that, saying, hey, how can I get involved? And I've been I've been pushing them off, saying we're going to do the announcement on the project. We're going to make it obvious how to get involved. This will be the place to um to really direct people and, and get them started. Uh, one thing I will say is um, keeping this brainstorming at least a little bit on track was important last time and it was a fair bit of work. And if we're gonna have a lot of new people come into the group, having a few people who've been here for a while who are willing to help guide and shepherd some discussions and things, um, if you're game to do that, just reach out to me, drop me a DM on the OWASP Slack, and I will probably recruit you into this and give you a job as I start to put this together. Um, the other thing I will say is, um, and I'll, I'll take this up with the core team as well, but a lot of the people on the call are on the core team, is um, I think there are, there are people on the core team who are obviously actively involved on a day-to-day -day basis. And a lot of you are here on the call. Um, I think there are also people on the core team who were involved at one point who have maybe gotten pulled off into other ventures and that's great. Um, so I probably will do a bit of a reset on the core team. I'll be reaching out there on the Slack channel to folks reaffirming your interest in a role that you have or are you interested in taking on something else. Um, but we'll try to reset and tighten that up as well um, and, you know, potentially make some space for some newcomers who are going to want to be super active and um, keep that core group fresh in terms of some of the decision making around the project direction. All right. So let's do um, some report outs. I think we first have a report out from Sandy. And then Emmanuel, and we'll, then we'll see what else we got here. So, Sandy. Yep. Yeah, so I'm working on the 1.0 version of the checklist. Um, re I've received great feedback on it. Um, I'm going to push and try to, <clears throat> you see, this is a pretty tight timeline. I'm going to work really hard. Um, I've, I'm still waiting on comments from one or two people. Um, but hopefully get it um, done next week and to Jason, get it to the rest of the team to review and then um, get it published by February 14th is my goal. 
Hey, just answering some questions in the chat from Ken. Um, I did reply in the chat as well. Um, I have not put out a sign up sheet yet for core team members and things. I was just warning y'all it's coming. So probably be coming in the next um next week or so. So if you're on the core team, be watching the core team alias for that. Um ads, you want to jump in and make your comment here? Or is ads on another call and it's just typing? I'll read his comment. Um, in my opinion, we are not digging deep enough into vulnerabilities and need separate alignment privacy as different channels. Um, uh, I do think in terms of Slack and things like that, spinning up some channels around um, some of these various topics, uh, I think we will do that as some of the brainstorming. Based on what comes out of that, we'll see what we kind of filter back into the, the core of the project and perhaps what become other sub projects. I think Ian, um, Sandy's checklist here is a good example of something that was a divergence from the intent of the core top 10. And we managed to keep that focus without diluting it, but while still creating something for a different audience that was really important. And so some of those topics, I think, are things the group might take on. Um, potentially without diluting that um, that top 10 thing. Ah, and Mike has joined us. Um, Mike and I were messaging. Um, for those of you who are new to the group, hey, Mike. he was <laughs> the MVP for the 1.0 version of the list, did a huge amount of work and got sucked into real life work stuff. Um, he reached out this week and um, asked about joining back in. Um, you want to just say hi, Mike? Yeah, I think uh, I think you kind of covered it. Um, I uh, was affected by layoffs with my employer at the time, um, mid last year, and since I've gotten a new gig and got my uh, legs under me and got got stable enough to be able to uh, give resources back to the group. Um, my new employer is also very stoked that, uh, to, to be able to, um, help in any way they can. Uh, so yeah, excited to be back. Cool. You want to just tell people who you're working for now? Oh, I work for a company called Praetorian. We do offensive security. Um, and, uh, yeah, just a lot of red teaming, uh, security for fortune 500 folks. And um, I, I also didn't mention I'm a designer. Um, so uh, I'm going to be getting back into things. But a, a lot of the things I hope to be doing is uh, transferring the website to a, a multi user uh, CMS. So uh, fewer bottlenecks and uh, give more people control over more parts of things, stuff like that. Cool. So, um... Mike, just in terms of who I'm thinking you might want to reach out to or vice versa for people here on the call, because I think a bunch of the people um, you should talk to are on the call. Um, ads is at least lurking on the call here. Um, I think ads is the one who's taken over the keys to the website. So um, you can coordinate there. Um, other person for you to definitely coordinate with is Jason, who's on the call. And Jason um, has done a lot of work to try and automate what some of you, what some of what you had to do on the 1.0 version of the list in terms of turning Markdown into PDF. But um, I think there's actually still a lot of room to help with the design element of that, but hopefully less of you copying and pasting. And then last, um, I don't remember if you and Aubrey overlapped, but Aubrey joined the group, took over from, I forgot her name, who was running PR for a while. Um, so he's running PR and he has been continuing to recycle some of your social assets and things like that. And I know he'd be excited to work with you on more of those things. So uh, just trying to make some connections there between folks to... Uh, think about how to bring you back into the group and leverage your talents. So welcome awesome. back. I'll reach out over Slack to people individually, try to get re, uh, re up to speed. Awesome. All right. Um, let's see. I, this is John. I jumped to you. I thought um, Emmanuel has quite a few slides. So why yeah. don't I do initially? So uh, an update for me. Um, 
the, the main headlines uh, the last week was that we are the number one security recommendation by the UK government generative AI framework, which I thought was a, a proof point of what you said at the beginning. Uh, Steve, that's, you know, we're ubiquitous and in, in how people are referring, uh, referencing us. So I think we need to uh, keep that uh, high standard. Um, I did a few workshops as part of my employment, but I always use LLM. And now I started including um, the checklist in the work that I do with customers on. And I, did, and these are kind of, I don't want to mention names, but these are kind of large organizations and they're very, very keen to also participate and uh, sponsor. And I know, Jason, you have mentioned something about your employer doing something similar. So um, still something to take uh, kind of um, as a conversation, a side conversation of how do we bring these people in and do they participate just as individuals? Is there a value for us to explore different way of supporting us? So without compromising the neutrality of August, but I think that will be a good conversation to have. How do we engage with these people that are more interested than, you know, the average uh, uh, organization? But in general, you know, kind of a huge enormous of uh, a huge and enormous amount of interest. Um, what came out of that is that what I said is that um, there is this view that um, overall. It doesn't make it redefines you know generative AI because it generates things. Doesn't it cannot be seen just as a security? You cannot say, well, I've produced something that potentially could create uh, instructions how to breach my system, but it's okay because it was generated securely. So you know we kind of need to address those other topics, and I think ethics, safety, um, with generative AI become or LLMs become the other coin, the other side of the other coin, but I do take um, Art's uh, point too that you cannot be both broad and in depth. So we need to rethink. You know that, that that's a big challenge that I see not just for us but for everyone uh, in this space. Um, the NIST AI Safety Institute, Institute Consortium. Uh, it's I don't know what's happening there, but it gets rescheduled. So not before February the fifth. Um, I was told again as soon as it's out. That includes. Um, Slack channels and research works. I'd love people to participate and and, and do work there, hands-on work. Uh, something that I've been kind of uh, tinkering, um, you know, before I go into that, um, someone who presents after me has done an enormous, enormous job on mapping different standards, and I don't want to steal their thunder, but I think other people uh, have done similar work. Bob did, Sandy, I know Rob is doing, and I think, you know, kind of it's time for us to consolidate that and have them as, like we have with the checklist and everything else, as a um, a reference materials, team reference materials, especially, you know, as we embark on 2.0. So I will set up a call to see how can we bring those resources together and create something that's a mapping artifact that's part of what we as group release and relates to AI exchange and all that. So Sandy and uh, Bob and the other person, uh, you'll probably be part of my working group and I'll reach out to you this week and anyone else, uh, I'll post on the, uh, the channel. Um, I also want to start as part of my engagement, there is a Cyclone DX standard that brings the uh, machine learning bomb. I want to start, uh, like I did at the beginning with the engagement, talking to people and organizing calls, to start organizing calls with the vendors that we talk to uh, and other standards organizations, see if we can actually review that uh, AI BOM standards, Bill of Material Standards, and create a reference implementation that demonstrates an action of how to incorporate that into benchmarking your LLMs. I think ultimately, and Steve, I talked to you directly, uh, that should become, I think, a separate sub-project, the hands-on project. But, you know, let's, let's start the conversations and then we can uh, we can uh, kind of flesh it out a little bit more. And that's me. Cool. Hey, a couple of quick comments. Um, lots of hot topics here. On the Cyclone DX thing, definitely. Watch out for John if he's starting sub-projects. I've learned that one. What's that? <laughs> What's that? I missed that. Sorry. What did you say there? Oh, I think she froze. Um, I'm sure she'll be back. Okay. But um, hey, uh, okay, a couple comments. One on the Cyclone DX thing, uh, definitely keep me in the loop there. I just, I wrote the supply chain management chapter of my LLM book in the last couple of weeks. And I, I really tried to 
talk up Cyclone DX is the answer there. And that's what I leaned on because it was the best thing available. But boy, is it kind of inadequate and poorly documented for that. So I really wound up making up a lot. Um, I think there's <laughs> a tremendous amount we could do with that group. And Steve, that's the purpose. And of course, you will be included, like I did with the first round of engagement, where I included everyone uh, in the various calls with people. It is basically a discovery set of calls to see what's the appetite of giving feedback to Cyclone DX, taking them through the journey, relating it to what we do, and making it actionable, which is yep. uh, an article of faith for us. Cool. Um, the other thing you mentioned was. Um, interfacing with some of the uh, commercial companies and things that are out there. You know, people on the call here have mentioned their companies willing to support things. We, I've had a lot of other people reach out around the announcement of 2.0. Um, one person who reached out to me is somebody who um, I worked with some many, many moons ago, which is Scott, who's on the call here. And Scott in particular, um, had volunteered to lead some of the activities around interfacing with companies. Um, I don't know, Scott, if you're in a place where you could come off mute and say hi and introduce yourself. Sure. Happy to. So happy to introduce myself to the team. Uh, I'm Scott Clinton. I've been uh, around the industry for a little while. As I mentioned, Steve mentioned, he and I worked together many moons ago at a little company called Sun. Uh, so since then, been doing a lot in the security space as well as in the analytics and AI space. So part of the LLM and security pieces have been sort of the nexus for me. And then uh, also been heavily involved with building commercial entities and working with startups right now and helping them build their businesses. So, um, so Scott, I think you and I are going to talk soon, but we'll figure out how to get you formally introduced into the group. And then um, uh, one of the things I was going to do anyway is introduce you to John. Um, so if you guys want to figure out how to connect up, um, that would be great because I think that's going to be one of the first connections to make. Um, John's been uh, interfacing incidentally with a lot of these commercial entities while leading some of the standards work. So I think it'd be great for you two to connect. Yeah, sounds great. Okay. John, I'll send out a note and we can find some time to connect. Yeah, it'd be great. Good to meet you. All right. So um, next up is Emmanuel. Um, I asked him to come and share some about the sub team that he spun up and kind of where where this group has gotten to and and talk about how we can leverage this as we jump into 2.0. So Emmanuel, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. So uh, from the data gathering methodology front, um, yesterday, I just updated our wiki and um, some of which I'm going to speak today. It's everything there for now. Uh, I just want to give a plan overview of what we're trying to accomplish, show some diagrams and, and some ideas. And just uh, in terms of uh, our collaboration space is on our Slack channel, which you see over there. <clears throat> well, in terms of... Uh, some ideas and things that uh, uh, we need to consider before I start presenting the plan is uh, some of the, the threats that we've been seeing, which were already mentioned here um, in terms of bias, privacy, ethics, and, uh, and also inaccuracies um, from real world data and also from synthetic data, data that is fabricated and has been used into the models. Some of the trends, some domain specific versions that have been popping up um, on the finance industry and the health industry. So each, each um, large language models used for those industry, they pose a different threat landscape that needs to be considered. Uh, adoption of open source models as well has been growing. Uh, the regs that have been growing more and more. AI versus AI. And um, it's growing uh, the red teaming engagement. Um, so uh, we've been, I've been observing uh, more and more companies establishing red teaming exercise like track modeling into their um deployment so um just to prevent because as 
it was presented uh, by Steve um, survey, we see not a lot of developers fully understand the importance of uh, secure by design, secure by design principles when uh, developing uh, those large language models. And also I wanna point out uh, some uh, vulnerability databases that are out there. Uh, their LVE Project Org, AI Risk, uh, AI Vulnerability Database, and also we know uh, private companies, um, they, they have their own vulnerability databases as well, uh, some of which if we can get into conversations and collaborations and if they could share some of their data with us, I think that will be helpful to understand more what they are doing, what we are doing, and how we can uh, work together to find solutions. So Steve, if you may go to the next slide. So this is uh, our 10 step roadmap for the data gathering methodology. So I've worked in the literature review and expert consultation. I completed a first um, version now for the uh, mapping, uh, which if you check on the, the, the chat, uh, I just managed to, to map our top 10 vulnerabilities to the NIST cybersecurity framework, ISO, MITRE attacks, SIS controls, CVE, CWEs, FAIR, STRIDE, ENISA, uh, ASBS, SAMM, MITRE, ATLAS, uh, BSIMM and OpenCRE, and um, I'll, I'll be expanding this. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it's not uh, very complete and in-depth, but my exercise was to come up with a mapping that points out to our list, and then it can refer back to all of each uh, framework, and developers can find a useful resource when, when they are working on building their own models. So next phases uh, is the ones that you're gonna see there. I wanna talk a little bit into details about um, all of them. So next slide, please, Steve. So we created um, a small diagram trying to understand uh, how is the data flow in terms of upstream and downstream flow. So um, uh, vulnerabilities are reported from those databases that I mentioned. They are uh, also referred to the CVE, CWEs, and AVID. Uh, which then come to us, NIST, MITRE, ATLAS, and, and other bodies. Uh, and then that forms a feedback loop downstream, which uh, when uh, frameworks are created by these bodies, they go down to the developers. And if it becomes law, then the developers will need to incorporate that. And that forms a uh, never-ending feedback loop that needs to be constantly updated. So uh, I just try to come up with some simplistic idea to be easy to understand. But as far as we know, that, that's how um, the data is flowing in terms of the vulnerabilities we find on our list. Uh, the next slide, please. So the first step, what I mentioned, it's just pointing back to research and uh, researches that have been done, consulting in, uh, in, into, uh, and, and then um, doing a research in databases like Google Scholar, IEEE, and, and others, and ArcSpeak as well. Uh, and then just trying to point out different uh, researches that have been done out and that, can, that developers can, can be using uh, to their models. Uh, so the mapping that I just commented, um, please, um, we are always looking for feedback. Uh, I'm not the owner of the truth. I know uh, I can't see all the perspectives. And I think the beauty of our group is uh, the collaborative effort that we have, bringing different spirits from different industries that it, it helps understand different sides of the coin. And then next slide, please. 
next one we want to validate and, and get uh, understanding on how uh, we, we can create a, a feedback uh, and then also maybe creating some um, code that can be automated this uh, data validation uh, to the frameworks we map back. I think uh, that that will be some of the efforts we wanted to do and come up with uh, our own risk assessment frameworks that will um, fully rely into the other framework that already exists. But I think uh, what makes us unique is we're not tied to any specific private company. So then we can bring uh, the diversity of our group uh, and bringing um, our own perspective. Next one, please. Uh, ethical considerations. I think uh, in the development that that we saw on the on the questionnaire there, very important. We need to come up with our own groups um, understanding about what should be ethically considered when building those models, uh, and then review everything we've we've done. Uh, and uh, next one, please. Compile and create a report to the work we've done in the data gathering methodology uh, and disseminate our findings. Uh, all of those steps, they will have to be um, constantly updated. We know the speed on which things have been changing and, uh, and also one of the efforts I haven't mentioned, but it will be important, it's also to create our own database with the vulnerabilities that are out in the wild. Some of the trends, some might not be even uh, confirmed yet, but some, some developers and researchers, they are finding um, different vulnerabilities when building the models. So, so that's pretty much our overall idea of uh, the work we were trying to do and accomplish. And uh, please hop, hop, hop in on the bus and help us give our ideas, criticism, and uh, I think our group will grow if uh, we uh, come together with our strengths um, and 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 build something that can be useful. Uh, if if everyone anyone has any questions, please let me know. Thank you. All right, questions or comments for Manuel? Yeah, I believe this is really useful. Um, like we, we don't have this, like even like uh, in the Cloud Security Alliance, we have the AI control group and also technology risk group. Uh, we don't have this uh, kind of uh, data gathering methodology. So we can certainly build upon this. Uh, maybe the question is, uh, Emmanuel, it's it's really good. Uh, when it will be, <laughs> I know it's uh, iterative. When it will be like a good enough stage that we can leverage. <laughs> yeah, absolutely can. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I, I think when I talked to Steve, one of the first things I told him, I said, Steve, um, I'm among a very um, high level expert group. I really do feel imposter syndrome here. And uh, I, I, I'm never sure of the things that I've done. Uh, and, and I even took a bit of a time to come up with the, the first draft of the mapping. So anyone who are interested in checking out the mappings that I came up with, just go and visit our wiki channel. Uh, which is in, in, in our, our main wiki, you're going to see a page for uh, the data gathering, and then it's going to point out to the repo with all the different frameworks there. And then, please, um, any any comments and suggestions would be really appreciated. One thing, hey, Manuel. Yeah. Oh, go, Ken. Sorry, yeah. So one thing, I think uh, Sandy uh, also is working with Kurt right, from Cloud Security Alliance. He has a different matrix, but it's also a similar approach is using different uh, uh, vulnerability database, different source, um, and he has a spreadsheet as well, and trying yeah. to 
do the mapping. I think maybe somehow yeah. there should be cross organization effort here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ken, that you're exactly right. So um, I reached out to Kurt and said, "Hey, um, Emmanuel and Bob and I um, have been talking about this. There's no, you know, we shouldn't duplicate work. So uh, we're staying connected. So that's my contribution to the Cloud Security Alliance right now is just trying to make sure that if we're doing something that that Kurt might find useful. I'm making sure that he has those resources. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think uh, communication uh, is key in all stages of whatever we're going to do. So we gain time instead of wasting. I just dropped on our chat uh, the link to our GitHub. So anyone interested, just please have, please have a look. And I think, you know, that's, that's the point I was making earlier on. I think it's great that everyone is doing all these things, but let's kind of try and consolidate them. I think what you have there actually, Emmanuel seems to have that place to consolidate. And, and I know Sandy, you have worked with the spreadsheet, so it'd be good to have that conversation and say, what's the best way of allowing people to do their things, but have something in place that says as a group, this is our mappings. Yep. No, you you know, complete alignment with you, John and Ken, which is, yeah. hey, everyone's doing great stuff. Let's make sure that it's um, we can share what we can and cross map um, if it if there's an opportunity. Great. I think if you guys can coordinate, that'll help a lot. Um, I will I will give one piece of advice to the the group here as we embark on this, um, Emmanuel, this is similar to some advice I gave Sandy when she was starting the checklist, which is these things don't get done unless you time box them. Um, and whenever we start something like this, you feel that imposter syndrome. When I started the original top 10 list, I knew nothing about LLM security. I barely knew anything about LLMs. Um, and the only way that we got that out was by creating sets of deadlines that forced activity and forced publication. And I think what we've seen is even the the very first versions of the top 10 list that were embarrassingly incomplete were far better than anything that was out there. The first version of the checklist was far better than anything that was out there. And even though Sandy knew all sorts of things she wanted to do, um, the reaction was very positive. So um, do some of your due diligence around doing some cross-group alignment here, but I would say also think really hard about a date not too far in the future where we would declare this, you know, pick a version number if it's 0.5 or 1.0 beta or whatever as a way to get that out there, um, announce it, get a lot more eyeballs on it, maybe find people who want to start using or collaborating on it. I think if we can continue to drive that forward, then we can make it something we can base the project on. All right, let's see. Do we have any other leads? Ah, we got localization slides from Talesh. Yeah, just a short slide, uh, not too much of an update. We currently all has on working right now. So this is one of those lulls between um, announcements of localizations. Italian and Spanish had some really good uh, progress in the last couple of weeks. Um, but I want to get uh, Japanese and French fully reviewed and then we'll time a second batch of localizations released sometime that's, uh, that's, that, that works well with, with the 2.0 announcement. Um, I'm aiming for Polish and Arabic for the third batch. And if anyone is willing to assist with additional languages for the third batch, there's still time to uh, message me, hop on our uh, Slack group, and we could, um, we could include that language in the third batch, which should follow. Uh, the work we've done in translate in the differences between version 1.0 and 1.1 uh, means that we work with diffs between uh, each of the top 10. So my hope is this would also translate into, um, this This would this would also carry over into 2.0. Uh, when we do launch 2.0, uh, my hope is to follow with some languages very soon afterwards. Um, and also Mike's back and uh, um, we have some new energy around automation of a markdown to PDF. So I'd be happy to collaborate with you guys because we've written a bunch of code around that too and currently perfecting it. That's about all the updates from the localizations right now. As I said, it's a little bit of a lull in updates until we are ready to announce again. Cool. What's your thinking about an ETA for, let's call it batch two? 
I'd, I'd like to time that with you uh, regarding uh, uh, the 2.0 announcement. Um, when it you think it will be most effective? Because um, I'm not 100% sure what what uh, <laughs> what are the timelines I'm aligning with at this point in time. What we did for the first batch seemed to work really well. We got that energy before the 2.0 announcement. Okay. Um, I mean, just to be clear with people in terms of timelines for 2.0, in terms of us having a deliverable that we're going to publish, we're, we're months away from that. So, um, okay. uh, I think pick, pick a time we'll, we'll pick a week that's clear for mm -hmm. you to announce, but let okay. me know we kind of what, do. you know, what an approximate time is there and we'll map it out mm -hmm. with, with Aubrey mm -hmm. in terms of what makes sense for a launch. But I think you have clear air for, for a while and okay. Sounds good. to get these, 1.1 versions launched a long time before 2.0. Don't wait for 2.0. You'll be waiting forever okay. and it'll be a complete rewrite. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. All right. I think that's it. So um, anybody else on the call today have anything that they would like to bring up to the group? Well, once. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Will. Uh, working on the uh, newsletter. Uh, you might have noticed I haven't sent out a newsletter in a little bit uh, between like the holidays and I've got new construction on my house. And then right now I've got like four, well, three of my kids and my wife with like flu and strep. So I, I've been uh, a little busy, um, but I, I think we have a lot of uh, announcements and, and things that we uh, should get out here in the newsletter um, from, you know, Steve and Emmanuel and everyone's side. Um, so I think there's a lot of great material here that we could put out uh, this month. Uh, but if anybody else would like to collaborate on the newsletter, uh, please reach out to me on Slack and uh, that'll make my life easier and we can uh, get them moving more regularly again. Awesome. Anybody else? All right, team. Hey, lots of great progress. Exciting to see all the progress on the um, data gathering standards, um, localizations, uh, really, really good stuff. So thanks everybody for putting in the effort. I think it's going to be exciting to embark in this next phase. So uh, looking forward to working with you all this year and pushing the boundaries again. Talk to you all soon. Bye. Thanks for checking out our bi-weekly meeting podcast. If you'd like to stay up to date on all of the latest news for the OWASP Top 10 for Large Language Model Applications, please click subscribe. And of course, we'd appreciate it if you'd share with a friend to grow our community. We'll see you in two weeks.